Hey guys, and welcome to my presentation on brassinosteroid biochemistry. The picture on the first slide is brassinolide, which is the first discovered brassinosteroid. So, onto their discovery. So, brassinolide, which was shown on the previous slide, uh, was first isolated in 1979 from Brassica napus, aka oilseed rape, and this is hence the name of brassinosteroids. And they were first discovered for their biological activity of stem elongation and cell division. Biological function. So brassinosteroids, when acting in conjunction with auxins, can do cell elongation. Brassinosteroids also help with male fertility with regards to pollen germination and pollen tube growth. And finally, vascular differentiation. This is using different subtypes of the brassinosteroid receptor, and this enables optimal xylem to phloem ratios. Plants have over 50 brassinosteroids, which have the basic structure shown here, which is quite similar to cholesterol with uh, multi-rings and a slight tail on the end. Um, here important things to notice are the B ring, which is a cyclic ester, and also on carbon 24, there can be different substituents. So this means that uh, the prisoner steroids can be C27, C28, or C29, meaning it has 27, 28, or 29 carbons. The most common of these is the C28 group, which includes brisinolide as shown here, and these contain most of the bioactive brisinosteroids. The basic building block of all brisinosteroids is acetyl-CoA, a two-carbon molecule, which can then be condensed with other acetyl-CoAs to form mevalonate. Now, several mevalonates can then be condensed through intermediates such as squalene to cycloartanol, a 30-carbon molecule. So starting from cycloartanol, a 30 carbon molecule, we then move to campestanol. Now here we see the main modifications include a loss of two carbons and these include losses in the multi-ring structure, but also gains in methyl groups in the aliphatic region in the top right of the molecule. Going from campestanol, we can then see that the pathway branches. It can either do an early C6 oxidation pathway or a late C6 oxidation pathway with carbon six circled in red here. Now, both of these pathways converge again to form castasterone, which is also a 28 carbon molecule. And you can see at the C6 position, we now have a ketone group. In addition to this ketone group, we also have some hydroxylations in the carbons in the top right of the molecule in the aliphatic chain. These are the rate limiting steps of brisinosteroid synthesis and uh, carried out by enzymes including DWF4 and CPD, which we will see later. So, castasterone to brisinolide. This is the key or first discovered brisinosteroid, and there's no change in number of carbons. All that's really done is that ring B becomes a cyclic ester. So in inactivation, what we find is you have a change in hydroxyl status and then you have conjugation. So specifically, if you remember from the previous diagram I showed, carbons 2 and carbon 3 have hydroxyl groups on it. These can be a pimerized change in their availability for conjugation, or we can have addition of hydroxyl groups by cytochrome P450s, such as SOB7 and BAS1. And both of these steps are followed by conjugation. So I've put this on a diagram here, and I've chosen a sugar as an example of a conjugate. However, you can also have a fatty acyl chain. Now looking towards transport of brisinosteroids, we see that they are widely distributed throughout the plant. There is actually no evidence of long distance transport of brisinosteroids, which means that the point of synthesis and the point of action are quite close. The receptor is actually on the cell surface. This differs from mammalian steroid receptors, um, which although they are inside the cell, don't require any transporters because the steroids are quite hydrophobic and so will pass straight through the membrane. These are the brisinosteroid receptors with BRI1 on the left and its co-receptor BAC1 on the right. BRI1 is a homodimer and starting from the extracellular to intracellular space, which goes from top to bottom, we see that BRI1 and BAC1 have a large number of leucine-rich repeat regions. Then moving through the membrane with a single transmembrane helix. Then at, towards the bottom of the diagram, we have a juxtamembrane region, then a kinase domain, which will phosphorylate serine, threonine, and tyrosine residues. It's represented by an oval. And then we'll have a C-terminal region at the bottom of the kinase region. Now this C-terminal region of BRI1 is actually autoinhibitory, which will come important later. So when brisinosteroid binds on the extracellular side, as shown, we get phosphorylation by BRI1 of BAC1 activation loop in the kinase domain. 
This then activates the BRCA1 kinase to phosphorylate the juxtamembrane region and the autoinhibitory C-terminal region. This removes its autoinhibition and so activates the BRI1 kinase. So looking downstream of BRI1, first we look at BKI, which is this orange protein here. Now in the inactive state, BKA actually binds to BRI1, the main receptor, and competes with BAC1, preventing activation. However, once the kinase of BRI1 is active, when persinosteroid is bound, as shown in the previous slide, BRI1 kinase will phosphorylate BKI, and this means it is pushed away from the membrane, away from competing with BAC1, and then once the phosphorylated version interacts with 1433 proteins, it can then be sequestered away, thus increasing the activation of BRI1 kinases. Another protein involved in a complex with BRI1 is BSK. Now, when activated, BSK is phosphorylated by BRI1 and it is dissociated from the complex. BSK is a kinase and will phosphorylate and activate a BSU phosphatase, shown in pink here. And then this BSU phosphatase will then dephosphorylate BIN2. And this is actually a negative regulatory step on the activity of BIN2. And BIN2 is important in the regulation of transcription factors, as we'll see in the next slide. As stated in the previous slide, BIN2 is inactivated by steroid stimulated BSU1 phosphatase. Therefore, without steroids, BIN2 is in the phosphorylated and active state. In this state, it can phosphorylate transcription factors, namely BES1 and BZR1, and as shown, these can be sequestered in the cytosol by 1433 proteins. Sequestering in the cytosol takes it away from the nucleus, and so therefore they cannot act as transcription factors. They can only act as transcription factors when they're unphosphorylated, when steroids are present. And once in the nucleus, they can act on their target uh, sites on the DNA and cause transcription. So a bit more on these transcription factors, BES1 and BZR1. They're 88 percent identical when looking at their amino acid sequence and they are basic helix loop helix proteins with the basic region being positively charged and so interacting specifically with the DNA. So what sites do they bind to on the DNA? Well both actually bind to the, the brassinosteroid response element on the left and BES1 also interacts with an E-box. Now note in both of these cases it's in a mixed heterodimer. The kind of genes they control uh, showed at the bottom is an example of a chloroplast development genes, GLK1 and 2, which are themselves transcription factors and therefore creating a transcriptional cascade. Now, in addition to this classical mechanism of transcriptional control, BES1 also will recruit ISW1, which is an ATP dependent chromatin remodeler, and this actually helps with transcription elongation steps. In addition to that, it will also help recruit histone demethylases and this helps transcription initiation. Moving on to regulation feedback, which in hormonal pathways is very important. Firstly, we see that there is transcriptional inhibition of CPD and DWF4, which are involved in biosynthesis of prisoner steroids. Next, we see that it increases the amount of receptor at the membrane. This will increase sensitivity. We also have the fact that BES1 activates the transcription of itself, and therefore this is a positive feedback loop. Additionally, we have ATBS1. Now, these are inhibitory transcription factors. So what they have is they have a similar structure to both BES1 and BZR1. However, they lack the basic region and therefore cannot bind specifically to DNA. And so will bind and basically sequester BES1 and CPD away from their specific sites in the genome. Finally, another receptor related topic is we have transcriptional activation of SBI1 which is a leucine carboxymethyl transferase. This can then activate a PP2A phosphatase, which we've seen earlier, which can then increase receptor degradation by dephosphorylation. So now to our overall model, we have at the top activation of the receptor by breast a steroid. BKI is sequestered, the orange protein. BSK is activated and expelled from the complex of the cell membrane. This allows it to then phosphorylate and activate BSU1, a phosphatase. The phosphatase can then inhibit BIN2. BIN2 is a kinase that is now no longer able to phosphorylate the transcription factors BES1 and BZR1. And therefore, when there's steroids present, 
BES1 and BZR1 are active in the nucleus and cause a transcription of brassinosteroid stimulated genes. As usual, when it comes to hormones, crosstalk is really important. So here I've just done the main example, which is brassinosteroids and auxins. They function cooperatively in cell elongation, as stated here. Um, moving into the specifics, uh, BES1 targets an auxin response gene and also PIN, which is an auxin efflux transporter. If you want more information on auxin and its signaling pathways, check out my other video. Uh, in addition, auxin will actually increase brassinosteroid biosynthesis by increasing the level of transcripts of the CPD gene, which is a cytochrome P450 dependent monooxygenase. And like I said, this is for cell elongation, which is one of the key biological functions of brassinosteroids. Okay, just final slide now of the key proteins. I just thought I'd include some of the um, abbreviations and what they actually mean, just so if you want to Google them, you can. And um, yeah, next video will be on abscisic acid. So cool. See you then.